up, Rad Fam? Brooks leather saddles are a wonderful thing, but many of us are not quite so sure how to take care of them and might even be hesitant to buy one because of this. So in this video, I'm going to demystify the Brooks saddle care and show you just how easy it is to care for your Brooks, give it the love it needs, and give it a long and illustrious life. Welcome back, I'm Ryan with the Rad Bike Adventure, the channel dedicated to getting you confidently prepared to travel this world and your own backyard with your bicycle. Actual size. And when I'm speaking of the Brooks saddle, I obviously mean a leather saddle uh, because the rubber ones that they make, the Cambria, those do not need um, as much attention as a leather saddle does. So just so we're all on the same page. It is Cambria, right? Cambium, that's what it's called, Cambium, not Cambria. Anyway, Brooks saddles, leather. Here we go. Now, if you own a Brooks or you're thinking about getting one, I know some people don't even wanna get a Brooks because they're like, oh, it's leather. I don't know, I have to do something special with it. It seems too complicated, but I assure you it is not complicated. It is much easier than you probably think. And hey, we're gonna cover it all today. Let's do this. So basically there are three main things you have to do with your Brooks saddle care. You gotta oil it, you gotta tighten it, and you gotta keep it dry. So let's look in more detail at those three main points. Okay, tip number one is you gotta oil it. So this is basically conditioning the leather, which includes softening it so you can break it in and also protecting it. And Brooks suggests that you, where's my stuff? Right there. That you only use the Brooks branded Proofide on your saddle. Let's get a close up of that. Are we focusing? Let's find out. Not quite, there we go. So that looks something like this. Hello. There we go. So I still have a fair amount in there and a little bit goes a long way. Now I've heard other people say you can use different things, but in my mind, this thing costs $10. I know it's tiny, but it's gonna last you a long time. I mean, I have four Brooks saddles here. Here's my, my collection. I guess I should show you the collection first. I've got, let's start over here. This is, this is just the classic B17 that came on my Kona Sutra, champion standard. Yep, there she is. We've got this guy that we got off of eBay, super, super cheap. This is actually the um, B15 and, it, oh, so no, they're not all B17, excuse me. The, this one you can stitch up, so that's pretty nice. This came to us in not the best condition, but we've done our best to uh, salvage it. So we got that guy. This was Darren's that she took on our trip. By the way, um, here's our full trip up here. And this is actually the ladies standard. So the B17S, it is a little bit shorter. So that is what the only difference is there. So for smaller bodied people, this fancy one, there's a fun story of how I got this saddle, but let's just say that I didn't have to pay for it and I got very, very lucky, but this is the premium, what do they call it? Oh no, the special. This is the special and isn't it beautiful? Titanium rails, look at these rivets. Oh my God, why didn't I take this on my trip? I don't know. But anyway, there's the collection. So yes, like I was saying, you need to condition and protect the leather. So basically what you're doing with this is you're taking a very small amount, just on your finger, and you are gonna massage it into the leather. You wanna do both sides. So you wanna get the top part and you also wanna get the underside. We actually made a totally ridiculous video all about <laughs> oiling your saddle or applying saddle cream as Brooks says. Uh, so you can check out that video right here. It is a little bit quirky, so strap in for that one. I have used this proof out on all of these saddles and I still have some to spare. So I just say, why not buy this? It's $10. You're doing what they say. They've formulated it. So obviously it works the best. And I don't know, just go for the proof out. If you, uh, if you didn't pop over there to see our other video, what you wanna do is you wanna let it sit for about an hour to marinate, to steep into the saddle. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But after you let it sit for a while, then you want to buff it out with a rag. I'm a rag sack here. Rag sack. Does that sound weird? Brooks sells a little kit where they have the proofied. They have a little brush. I think it comes with the spanner and a rag. And then you have everything you need to do um, to take care of your Brooks there. But you could just, you know, kind of go like this and just buff it out. But you need to let it soak in first. And I tend to like to let mine sit overnight. Um, doesn't say that on the Brooks website, but I've heard some old timers say that. You want to let it sit overnight because it might be like too soft when you got on it. Oh, and if you do take your saddle off, it's a good idea to mark where it was on your bike. So then you know the exact position and you don't have to try to figure that out again. As for the breaking in period, it seems to vary per person. Some people say it took them a week. Some people said it took them a month. That's another thing that I wouldn't let that stop you from buying a Brooks saddle because 
myself personally and my partner, we really didn't find it that difficult to kind of deal with the initial discomfort of sitting on a very hard leather saddle. It, it broke in very quickly. I think as long as you do the proof hide when you first get it, let it sit overnight, and then you go take it for a ride. Um, some people have said it takes like 200 miles to break it in. So I don't know, maybe that is why we felt like after a week of riding that it was like fully ready to go because that would have been a bit over 200. But yeah, oiling your saddle. Now that you know how to do it, how often do you do it? Now this is debated, but the rule of thumb that Brooke says is that you should oil it when you get it. So again, you're just gonna do the top side and the underside, buff it out as needed. And then you don't really need to do it again for another six months. They say during the breaking in period, you can do it a little bit more often, like maybe one other time, but you really need to be careful that you don't overdo it and then the leather becomes soggy. So just remember that with the Brook saddle, less is more. I've heard of other people just getting it straight out of the box. They never put proof height on it. I wouldn't recommend that, but they say that it's been fine. <laughs> you really just have to eyeball this. How many miles you're riding? How often are you riding? Are you getting really sweaty? And just look at your saddle. If it looks dry and parched, like it needs some oil, give it some oil. If it still has its nice shine, I mean, this one is still super shiny, you can see, then you're probably good to go and you don't need to oil it. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Brooks just says every six months. I say it really depends on how much you're riding and the conditions and just take a look. And if you think, you know what, this could use a little bit more oil, go for it. Again, less is more. Okay, point number two, which is you need to tighten it. Now that is what this little guy is for. Again, I think people get intimidated because they're like, my saddle comes with tools. I don't want that. This is a tiny little wrench or a spanner. If I'm speaking to UK, Aussie and uh, Kiwis. Does everybody else say spanner except for uh, Americans? Let me know in the comments down below. But you're gonna use this little wrench spanner and the saddles have a bolt. And basically, I think you could just use a regular wrench on here, but this is just much easier to get in. Other wrenches are too fat. Just put it around this little bolt and you're gonna turn it clockwise and then you can see how the, the tension is. I think I could do one more turn on this actually. Okay. Now the next question of course is when do you tension it? Like how often do I have to do this? Do I have to do this after every time I ride? Is this a weekly thing? Once again, less is more. I have heard of people never tensioning their saddle. Wouldn't recommend that. I have seen some pretty bowed saddles because what's happening is, you know, this is leather, it is pliable. And the more pressure you put on it, it's gonna start to sag. So what you're doing by tightening that bolt is it is pulling the leather and pulling it a little bit taut so it eliminates that sag. Because if you sit on that saddle when it's really saggy, it's not gonna be very comfortable and it could damage the saddle. So you're gonna wanna do this it's kind of the same thing with the Proofide. It's somewhere about every six months or so. Some people say less than that, maybe once a year. Again, I think it really depends on how much you're riding, how much you weigh, how much pressure you put in the saddle. There's so many things. Just look at your saddle, feel your saddle. If it's starting to feel really squishy, then just give it a couple turns. You saw how much I did it. It's really not much and that's it. It takes five minutes. Please do not be put off or intimidated by this. It's very, very easy to do. We actually didn't even take this tool with us on our tour. We just like pop into a shop and be like, hey, can you tension this up? We did that once on our almost year and a half long trip and the saddles are doing completely fine. Like you can see there is no sag. I mean, it's broken in a little bit, but still looking good. So let's get into point number three, and that is keeping your saddle dry. Now it is leather, it is permeable, it is porous. You really wanna make sure that it doesn't sit out in the rain all night. Conversely, you also don't want it to sit in the sun. Leather will be a little bit more um, subject to damage if you leave it out in the elements. So I would say with the Brook saddle, this number three point is really just taking a little bit more care with your saddle and it will give you a very, very long life if you do that. So let's cover the first one, which is covering it, keeping it out of the rain and out of the sun. Hey, you could just use a simple old, what are these called, shower caps. You could just use a shower cap. It's actually what Darren used on our trip. Darren is my partner in crime. Sorry, I keep mentioning her. You haven't met her in this video. And just like that, right? Dollar store cover. <laughs> so you could use a plastic bag. One dollar, 
there you go. And it's, it's so elasticized that it really does snug around it quite well. I think that that's sufficient. The other thing we have is the Brooks Saddle Cover, the official one. This thing is $15, so quite a hefty markup from the shower cap. The shower cap honestly works fine. I don't, I don't think I really need this, but I kind of wanted to see like, is it any better? I think it's a little bit lighter weight, but here's the official Brooks Saddle Cover. There it is. So you can feel how fancy you got the official cover. Slide it on there. And then it just gets cinched up. Nice little cover for your saddle. So I guess it looks a little nicer. But some may argue that this has more personality. So to each their own. It can also kind of hide your saddle if you wanted to hide it. I don't know. Maybe that doesn't really work. People will be like, why are they covering it? Is it really nice? In that case, just go for the plastic bag. So you're keeping it dry. You're keeping it out of the sun. And one other tip that I'm going to give you is to make sure that you don't like rest your bike against your saddle. Probably not a very good idea to do that with a synthetic saddle either because you don't want tears and little rips. But I think that it's easy to do it with a synthetic one because you're like, ah, it'll be all right. But with the Brooks, you really don't want to do that. I'll show you why. We actually had to hitch a ride in New Zealand and it was resting up against like a cage in the back of this truck. And we put a little bit of that proofied care onto it and it looks so much better, but you can see it got totally dented in here. <laughs> so that was our own fault. And a few little scuffs, scuff there. Also don't flip your bike over if you wanna work on it without putting something down first, because again, you're gonna kind of scuff up your saddle and you don't wanna do that. So those are my extra little tips for caring for your Brooks saddle. If you guys are digging this video, you're getting some value out of it. If you could hit that thumbs up button, that would be awesome. It really helps the video and really appreciate it. And if you are interested in other videos like this, then hit the subscribe button. If not, no worries, but I'm glad you're here with me right now, enjoying this time together, learning about Brooks saddles. And I'm wearing my apron today, woo! This is the first time I think I've worn the apron in the video. I think it's gonna be a staple for any of the uh, fix it, fix it and workshop area videos. I'm definitely not a mechanic. I'm learning as I go and I encourage you all to do the same. Okay, so let's wrap this up and recap the three points that you need to know to take care of your Brooks saddle to give it a long and illustrious life. Number one, that is oiling it, putting on the proofied, making sure you do the top and the underside of the saddle and giving it a good buff out probably once every six months, every year, maybe less, maybe more. And then tightening it up with your tension spanner. Give that a few clock, clockwise, which way is clockwise? Clockwise. A few clockwise turns every now and then. Again, not very often. And number three, keeping it dry with a cover, keeping it out of the sun and making sure that you don't carelessly lean it against something and damage the leather. And that's really all there is to it. That's it. It's really not that complicated. And it's a beautiful, lovely saddle. And we highly recommend it. We absolutely loved it while we were on our tour around the world. We're actually gonna have a long-term review. When we make that video, I will put the link up here. Question of the day, what do you do to properly care for your Brooks? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments down below. And do you have a Brooks saddle yourself? Are you thinking of getting one? Did this video make you think, Okay, this isn't as scary as I thought. Maybe I'll go check a Brooks out. Thank you guys for being with me today. Hope that was helpful and educational and you got something out of it. You learned about your Brooks saddle and how to care for it. Love my Brooks. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Everyone's staying sane and healthy out there and getting out for some bike rides. All right, that's all for now. We'll see you in the next video. Right on. Okay, you guys, I looked up Cambium. So I was like, Cambium, a cellular plant tissue from which phloem, xylem, or cork grows by division, resulting in woody plants, secondary thickening. <laughs> call it Cambria. You should call it Cambria. Why is it called Cambium? Someone will know out there and they're gonna tell me. They're gonna tell me. Yes, they are.